So first I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Um, and I'm really going to try to make this lecture very introductory. So if certainly if you don't understand something, please throw something at me or yell. Um, OK, so I'm going to start out by just saying, if we're studying algebraic geometry and characteristic P, then there's at least three things that I think we all know about that sort of maybe go wrong, or at least don't work as well as we want. Um, and maybe some of those are resolution of singularities and at least in dimension bigger than or equal to four, we don't know what the status is, at least as far as I know. Maybe someone here does. But um, <clears throat> we don't know how to resolve singularities in dimension bigger than four, even you know, over an algebraically closed field of characteristic P. So characteristic P, what's missing? <clears throat> The other thing which I think gets used a lot, especially in birational algebraic geometry and characteristic zero, which at least one has to be very careful about in characteristic P, is sort of Bertini type theorems. And so general element of base point free even of a smooth variety, in characteristic zero, a general element of a base point free you know, linear system is going to be smooth, or at least have you know, mild singularities if you have a variety with mild singularities. But in characteristic P, this is totally false. You know, Frobenius gives you examples where general elements of base point free linear systems are you know, non-reduced. Um, and they can also be badly singular, even if they are reduced. And I really am not going to be able to say anything about what, how to get around these issues at all. Um, but what I am going to tell you a little bit about is um, at least some methods for at least sometimes getting around the one other thing that's missing, and that's Kodaira type vanishing. So Kodaira, Akazuki, Nakano, you know, maybe in one version, but really Kodaira type vanishing. So I mean really Kawamata Fifeg, because that's the form that's Kawa usually used in birational algebraic geometry. So what I'm going to tell talk about today is maybe I'll put stars on it or something. Actually, I have some colored chalk here. I'll circle it in yellow. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is different ways that we can, or at least one different way that we can um, sort of bypass the fact that Kodaira vanishing is false in characteristic P, you know, as Raynaud um, proved quite a while ago. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let me start by reminding you what Kodaira vanishing is, and I'm going to give you well, we're going to talk about some of the ways you might use this in sort of a birational setting. And then we'll sort of see how you can sort of replace that with Frobenius and characteristic P, at least some of the time. OK, so let's say x for now is a smooth projective variety over the complex numbers. Um, <clears throat> Uh, let's say L is ample. I'm going to use omega x to be the top differential forms. Um, of x. And really, in a little bit, this is going to be the canonical module in the sense of Hartshorn, you know, for non-smooth things. And so we'll certainly, or, um, or, you know, part of a dualizing complex maybe later. But, for now, we can just say this because we're on a smooth variety. And so what, what does Kodaira vanishing say? say? It says at least one formulation I'm going to find most convenient to work with is that, OK, if I look at the cohomology of omega x 
twisted by L. And if I ever say the word adjoint line bundle, that's what I'm going to mean. That's sort of a omega x twisted by a line bundle. This is 0 for all i positive. Okay. On a smooth projective variety over C, L is ample. And you can weaken this ample condition in various ways. You know, big and naff or big and semi-ample is fine. Um, and there's all the other pairs versions which also sort of weaken that condition a bit. Um, but we're just going to start with this. And this is the statement that isn't true in characteristic P. So this is Godira vanishing. Even for surfaces. For curves, it's fine. <sighs> OK. So <clears throat> sort of to motivate the replacement for Kodaira vanishing characteristic P, I want to give you, I want to show you um, how people combine resolution of singularities, which is certainly a birational thing, with Kodaira vanishing to, say, weaken this smooth hypothesis right here. OK. So <clears throat> I mean, some singularities like KLT have been hinted at, Kalmata log terminal, um, in some of the other talks. But I'm going to um, talk about a slightly weaker version of log terminal singularities called rational singularities. So definition, x has rational singularities. Oh, I'm sorry, a smooth projective variety over C? What? Oh, OK. Um, hmm. <laughs> X is a variety over C. All right. Well, no, smooth projective varieties do have rational singularity over C as well. I, I, I will point that out. Uh, <laughs> um, well, t t today we're not going to go into that direction, but, but we could. Oh, so this is a variety over C, not, not, not necessarily smooth. Um, if, OK, it satisfies two properties. I'm going to write number two first, because it's less important. Um, X is Cohen Macaulay. And I'm going to abbreviate that sometimes by CM, which is not complex multiplication. So that, for me, that'll be Cohen Macaulay. Um, <clears throat> and the other condition is that for all or any resolution of singularities, pi from y to x, a resolution. OK. We have pi lower star omega y being isomorphic even by some canonical map to omega x. And so this one, I really do mean the canonical sheaf, say, of Hartshorn. If x is normal, you can take this to be the top wedge power of the differentials um, on the smooth locus, and then just reflexify or double dualize or S2ify more generally. And this isn't the usual definition of rational singularities. This is Kempf's criterion for rational singularities. OK. So it's a theorem, and I'm going to prove it to you in just a second. <clears throat> well, not even a theorem, it's an observation almost. That if x has rational singularities and L is, I'm going to say big and nef, but ample implies big and nef, if you don't like those words. Um, <clears throat> if x has rational singularities, and x is projective, then I still have the Kodaira vanishing formulation here equals 0 for all i bigger than 0. And so this is a, just a quick observation. And we're going to prove it from the definition and our resolution of singularities. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to sort of show you in some sense, I'm, trying, I'm really trying to motivate what's going to happen in characteristic P in just a couple minutes. OK. So I want to prove this. OK. So my obvious thing to do 
is take pi from y to x to be a resolution of singularities. Okay. I'm going to go over to that board over there, and we'll continue on. So I'm going to take a resolution of singularities, and now I'm just going to use my definition of rational singularities over there. I'm really only going to need part one. H i x omega x tensor L. Well, this is h i x pi lower star omega y tensor L. It's because omega y, push forward of omega y is omega x. <clears throat> and now, there's a slight relative version of Kudaira vanishing called grau riemann schneider vanishing, which I'm, again, not going to prove, but it's by, I'm going to call it GR vanishing. By GR vanishing, what it says is that the higher direct images of the push, uh, the push forward of omega are all zero, in characteristic zero again. It's not true in characteristic P. Um, <clears throat> And so what this says is, OK, this is hix. I'm going to say derive push forward of omega y tensor L. And now this is a composition of derived functors. I'm taking global sections. I'm taking push forward. I'm just going to get that this is, and I'm also going to use the projection formula. This is locally free. It's a line bundle, so I can pull it back. No derived functors there. This is hi omega y pi lower star, or I don't need a pi lower star anymore. That's the point, because I'm going up to y. And I have to put pi upper star L. Now, if I blew up something and I have an ample divisor, it's no longer going to be ample. But it's still big enough, or even big and semi-ample, which is enough still to give you the Kodaira vanishing statement there. You don't actually need ample big enough. Big and semi-ample is fine. And so this is 0 because this is big enough. OK, so let's take a step back and think through what we just proved here, or how we proved it. We didn't know could I vanishing on x. And so what we did instead is we passed to a different variety where we did know it, and then we deduced it on x. OK? <clears throat> And we're going to try to do something kind of similar in characteristic P in just a couple minutes. There's one other observation I want to make right here. Even if x didn't have rational singularities, I still get this vanishing. This doesn't require anything. This guy right here still has some vanishing. If you, this guy is kind of like a proto-multiplier ideal. It is a multiplier ideal, actually, if x is Gorenstein, essentially. So this is some kind of multiplier ideal type object. And so this is some kind of almost like a natal vanishing if you just go from here to here. Yeah? Why? Yeah, yeah. And the only thing we have to make sense of it is the resolution of things. That's correct. So it's smooth. That's it. So, 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 so it's a resolution of singularity. So that means this, you know, so x is singular, probably, although I started out with it being smooth, but, but now it's singular. Um, <clears throat> and so if it's singular, the sort of the natural thing to do, at least from the birational perspective, is take a resolution of singularities, which just means do some blow ups until you get to a smooth variety. We don't know that that happens in, um, I mean, we know that works in characteristic zero. We know it works in characteristic P for dimension bigger than, or sorry, less than or equal to 3. And we know what happens in mixed characteristic in dimension, well, 2 or 3. OK, so, so, so we, actually, we, we actually, dimension bigger than 4, though, is a mystery, except in characteristic 0. Let me say that. Yeah? Which one? This one right here? Oh, we still have this guy vanishes. So even if you don't have rational singularities, 
this, this cohomology still vanishes if you replace omega x by the push forward of omega y. And not having rational singularities actually is just going to mean it's actually a, it's always a subsheaf of omega x. Yeah, no, no, actually, the, well, in characteristic zero, the higher direct images are all zero. So we only need the zeroth piece. Okay? <clears throat> and so if you want this, we still always have this vanishing in characteristic zero. This thing here is like a multi, this is basically a multiplier ideal, sort of. And so this is, this vanishing is usually called natal vanishing, if you, if you replace it with a multiplier ideal. Okay. <clears throat> it is independent of the choice of resolution. In fact, Grout, Riemann, Grout and Riemann Schneider observed this in their original paper on Grout Riemann Schneider vanishing, and they said it would be interesting if people studied this thing. So, yes, it is independent of the choice of resolution. Um, it basically it basically comes down to the fact that if I take two resolutions, then Smooth things have rational singularities. So when I've, if I have like a y prime over y, I'm trying to push forward omega y prime. I can may as well push it down to here first, and then I then it equals the omega y here because smooth things have already have rational singularities. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So where's my page two? There it is. So now I want to move to characteristic P. So in characteristic P, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Kodaira vanishing is, is not true even for smooth surfaces. Okay, we can't we can't get around that. Kodaira vanishing not true. Okay, but I have a question for you. Can we find maybe some proper map pi from y to x? Let's say proper. I don't want to just like include an open set or something. <laughs> Get vanishing that way. Can we find a proper map so that um, <clears throat> hi y omega y tensor up with the pullback of L equals zero for all i bigger than zero? Okay, so. We can't use resolution of singularities for two reasons. One, we don't know it exists. But even if we did know it existed, we're still not going to have this vanishing a priori. I mean, we're, 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 it, we're not trying to be birational. No. Subjective, yes, proper surjective. Thank you. Thank you. Proper surjective dominant map. Yeah, I want a proper. Yeah, I, I don't want to just include a point either. That's. <laughs> um, so can we find a proper surjective map so that the higher direct images of these things vanish? All right, I'll give you a moment to think about it. Resolutions are not going to work. Well, alterations probably not either. I'd be okay without, but. But you know, but 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 there's okay. So in characteristic P, there's one map in characteristic P that we didn't have in characteristic zero, and it turns out that one works. Yay! Okay. What? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So X is projective, projective over K. Characteristic of K is P, and L is ample. Okay. Yes, Frobenius. Yes, I, I should have kept all my hypotheses around. Frobenius is the one thing we sort of have left. Our one extra tool. Um. <clears throat> and so, so let me show you how you 
why Frobenius works here, or at least an iterated Frobenius. So I'm going to assume everyone here has seen the Frobenius morphism, certainly on rings or fields. Um, <clears throat> if I have a scheme of characteristic P, well, the map on rings induces a map on schemes too. So, you know, I have F from OX to F lower star OX, and this just sends local sections Z to Z to the P. But I can iterate it I can apply this map over and over again, maybe e times, and I get, you know, some kind of map like this. Where, okay, f to the e is the map on variety, so I shouldn't call it that. But this is my e iterated Frobenius. Okay, so let's think for a second how this works. Hi, okay, what's my trick? Y equals x. Pi is E iterated for Benius. E is relatively, you know, is not too small. HIY, okay, that's X. Push forward, or FE lower star omega X. Tensor with Oh, I just need to write it the other way. Omega X tensor with the Frobenius pullback of L, we have to understand what the Frobenius pullback of L is. Well, Frobenius raises functions to the p to the eth powers. Line bundle is defined by some transition functions, so pullback is just going to raise those transition functions to the p to the eth power. And so what we're going to have is this is going to be h i x omega x tensor L to the p to the e. L is ample, so by definition of ample, or one definition of ample, this is zero for all i bigger than zero, and E is sufficiently large by Sarah vanishing. Yeah? I am choosing the absolute for Benius. Um, do I need, no, I don't need to worry about that. If I choose the absolute one, I don't think I need to worry about that. Um, you will, okay, let's say K is perfect. Then I don't have to worry about K, X being different than X. Okay. Let's assume K is perfect. If I was assuming C in characteristic zero, I'm willing to assume perfect in characteristic B. Yes, I mean, it's still sort of true, but I should be a little bit more careful. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the E iterated Frobenius, and so I get this vanishing here. Okay, so what I really want to do today is I want to show you how in a couple different contexts we can use this vanishing to replace Kodaira vanishing in characteristic zero. It, this is not a very deep vanishing as I wrote it. This is just stair vanishing, <laughs> you know. Um, so, <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to start by talking about a concept that does come up in, you know, sort of birational algebraic geometry. I'm going to talk about Sashadri constants. So I, I think, am I, am I right? The only reason you use this piece of food is for that advantage. Oh, sure, 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 Yes, I'm, and yes, absolutely. People have known about pullback of Frobenius for line bundles even long before that. <laughs> yes, I mean, this is certainly a very common trick to give yourself banishing or other things. But I'm just going to show you how one explicitly we can replace it here. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with the Chaudhry constants. Say so x is projective. I'm actually going to start with, um, probably start with smooth, just so I don't, well, I'm a little bit more careful. L is ample, say. So z in x is a point. And pi from y to x is the blow up 
of x at little z. I don't want my z to be too big, but I also don't want it to be unreadable. <laughs> OK. And so then we define the Sashantri constant of our line bundle L at z to be the following. OK. It's going to be the supremum over all t bigger than 0 of pullback of L. I need one more notation. E is going to be the exceptional divisor of pi. And I'm just going to subtract off t times e here. OK. Now, again, you know, it's even in Hartshorn, essentially, although not quite phrased this way, so that this is big in math. Or let's say ample. I'm taking supremum. It's even in Hartshorn that if I take basically an ample divisor, I subtract off like maybe one copy of E, but, I, but if, if this guy is really, really sufficiently ample, then this difference right here is still going to be ample on the blow up. No, but minus TE, it is ample. Yeah, my, I'm sorry, I'm probably in the way there. But minus TE is, is you know, for, for small t, it is ample. Um, if, if I say nef and big here, I could put nef and big there. That might be safer. Um, if I say nef and big, I could, yeah, OK. So, <clears throat> OK, so for small values of t, because this is ample, this thing is ample too, OK? Um, and, and so, but as t gets bigger, you know, I'm subtracting off more and more. There's no way I'm going to still be ample. It's only, you know, relatively ample for the map. <clears throat> and so this is called the Seshadri constant at z, of L at z. Okay. All right, so what is this really measuring? Somehow this should, I, I think the way to think about this is this is measuring, um, this is measuring somehow how positive L is at the point Z. Okay. No, no, T, T is a rational number. Yeah, T or, or T is a real number. No, no, I should have said that. T is a rational or real number. I'm taking the supremum. Um, and so I am talking about ampleness of a Q divisor here. And that just means clear out the denominators and take ampleness in the usual sense. <clears throat> OK. So <clears throat> there's the following proposition. And I'm going to prove it in characteristic 0. And then we're going to slightly modify that proof to make it work in characteristic P. OK, so this is over C. We'll start over C anyways. If the Sassadri constant of L at Z is bigger than the dimension of X for some, again, I guess Z is an X. I'm not, not going to write that over again. Um, then. Omega x tensor L is globally generated at, at C. So this Sashadri constant gives you an effective way of determining, you know, or how to, how big I need to make things to make this globally generated there. All right, and I think this is really, you know, maybe where the interest of these in, you know, Demai's work came from. Lawrence can probably say more. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> what? At Z. Just at Z. Just, just at a particular point. So this is really going to be measuring positivity of L just at, just at that point. Okay. So I'm going to prove this uh, basically right now. And the first observation I want is that pi upper star 
L minus N E is ample, or at the very, you know, or if you want big enough. And this is just because the Sachadri constant is bigger than the dimension of X, N, which I need to write down, N equals dim X. Sachadri constant minus this guy is gonna be is gonna be ample because this is this we're taking the supremum of those values. Right? And so the last time it's ample is bigger than the dimension, so this one is still ample. Okay. So how am I gonna prove this? Well, the proof is just a big diagram. I'm gonna write it down. I should have like put it here, so then I could have like <laughs> shown you all instantly. That would have been more convenient. Okay, so <clears throat> the trick is if I take the maximal ideal at z, I tensor up with omega x and I tensor up with L. And of course, this lives inside omega x. I need to give myself more room. Omega x tensor L. And this guy maps to omega x tensor L, this whole thing mod the maximal ideal of Z. To show that this thing is globally generated at Z, I need to show that the global sections right here, that this map surjects. That's what I'm aiming for. Right? OK. Now, this guy kind of looks like the setup we had for Kodaira vanishing, but it's not quite because I have this MZ here. But I can blow things up, and then things will actually look a little bit nicer. OK, so remember y to x is the blow up of my little point z. And what we're going to have now is h naught. <clears throat> see if I can write this down right. I still have omega y. Mm, I will write h naught y, omega y. I'm going to mix line bundle and divisor notation here because that's how it is in my notes. And if I, if I try to avoid that, I will only create more problems for myself. So pi upper star L minus any, and we're going to talk through why this sort of maps to here in an obvious way in just a second. This guy's going to map to h not y omega y, I'm going to twist by one copy of E off, minus n minus 1 E. And then this guy is going to map to h naught E. Use the exceptional divisor, remember. OK, omega y plus a copy of E mod out by omega y, this is the conjunction formula, gives me omega e. And then I'm going to have um, pi upper star L, and I need to subtract off that term too. Restricted to E. So some kind of self-restriction there. OK. Yeah. Is that supposed to be NE? What? All right, all right. Oh, you're right. That should be an any. Thanks. Yes. It doesn't matter, but you're right. It's not going to matter, but you're right. You're absolutely right. So this is, all right, I'm going to write this a different way. This is omega y. Yeah, that's actually what I had in my notes, and I was confused because I wasn't following it. OK, all right. Exercise, check this, and assume, make sure it's right. OK, let's think for a second now. We have, what's omega y? How does it compare to omega x? Omega y is the pullback of omega x, and then I have n minus 1 copies of e, because I'm blowing up a smooth point. Remember, e is just a pn minus 1. And so this is, and then of course I'm subtracting off n copies of e, and I have n minus 1 extra, so that's subtracting off one extra copy of e. And I'm pushing forward, uh, something pulled back might, you know, Basically, I have omega x pulled back 
pull back of L, and then I have minus one extra copy of E, minus one extra copy of E, when I push that forward, I'm just going to get the maximal ideal at Z. Likewise here, except I don't have any copies of E, everything cancels out completely. Okay. And this one again, um, <clears throat> if, you, if you run through it, E restricted to E, I mean, this is a, okay, omega E, E is a PN minus one. This is just a copy of O. L doesn't, you know, L is a line bundle. We're blowing up a point, so L is constant on that line bundle. It does, doesn't show up at all. This is going to go away entirely. I'm going to have n copies, subtracting off n copies of E, n restricts, E restricted to E is minus one. And then I have on PN minus one, omega is n copies, you know, it's, it's ON. So these cancel out, and this is just a whole copy of O, of OE. And in fact, it's easy to see actually that this map right here is an isomorphism. <clears throat> okay. We are trying to show this surjectivity right here. We, a priori, we don't know that vanishing right on the edge here, because that's Kodaira vanishing. But if we kept going on this sequence, on the bottom, we would have H naught Y omega Y and then pi upper star L minus N E. And that is what I said is ample. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, so this is ample. And so again, uh, omega Y tensor ample. Kodaira vanishing in characteristic zero tells me that's zero. So this map right here is surjective. So if I chase through this, I go, um, <clears throat> I get this composition is surjective, and hence this one is surjective as well. OK. So I use Kodaira vanishing. I want to do this proof. I'm maybe going to try to avoid writing down the whole darn diagram again, because that took too long. Um, <clears throat> But I want to replace this Kodaira vanishing with Frobenius. Okay. All right, so I'm sorry. I should have thought through this a little bit better. But that diagram is going to sort of continue on over here. Okay. <clears throat> so. In characteristic P, this picture doesn't quite work. <clears throat> because this H1, I have no hope of probably expecting in general this thing is gonna, you know, this thing is gonna vanish. So what do I do? Well, <clears throat> I first I have my, I'm just gonna um, basically. This comes from resolution to x, or blow up to x. And I'm going to do just one more step. I'm, I don't have room here, so I'm not going to write it there. I'm going to write it over there. I'm going to do Frobenius to blow up to x. <clears throat> so if I just put Frobenius in front of everything, hi, fe lower star. OK, so I have omega y. Fe lower star omega y mapping to omega y. That's just, remember, I guess I will write this up here. I have oy mapping to Fe lower star omega y, or sorry, oy. And I can dualize that, and I'm going to get Fe lower star omega y mapping to omega y. So that's all the map I'm using. So I have this guy, omega y, and then I need to pull back by Frobenius this mess right here, which just, as we saw before, just means put a p to the e in front of everything, because I'm mixing my divisorial and line bundle notation. OK. Now I have the next term. Again, it's the same setup. I'm going to do something slightly different. 
I'm going to do the sort of the log version of this map just because it makes things a little bit cleaner. At least to explain. Um, I'm going to have a Fe lower star omega y. I'm not going to write the, the thing I'm taking sections on. I'm going to have I'm going to have one copy of E. This is sort of like my log setup. I'm going to have a pi upper star L, and there's a P to the E there. And I'm sorry for making this so painfully slow. And then I have a minus P to the E and E. There's a log version of that map, too. Omega Y twisted by E to omega Y twisted by E. And then I just do this one more time. That maps to the H naught of E. Let's see if I can, I guess I wrote it here, so I should just copy what I wrote probably, because I probably wrote it right that time. Omega E, P of the E, pi upper star L minus P to the E and E, restricted to E. All this is restricted to E. And I've set this whole thing up to map to H1 of this thing. But now, this is P to the E times an ample, so we get Sarah vanishing again. OK. Now, at this point, I have some vertical maps. This guy goes over here, as we can all clearly see. Um, I'll choose some other colors, maybe. This guy goes to here. Remember, I'm in characteristic P now, so oops. This guy goes to here. <sighs> For reasons that I'll discuss in just a second here, this map right here is surjective. This comes down to the fact that projective space is some so-called Frobenius split. Okay, and I'll, and I'll prove that in general in just a second. But once we have that, the proof goes through exactly the same. Because I get some section, happy little section in this H naught, right? And this guy is going to surject right here because of Sarah vanishing. So I'm not going to, right? <clears throat> or, okay, basically, all right, this map surjects. This map surjects, yoink. <laughs> I have here to here surjective, and so that surjects as well. That's the entire proof. It's exactly the same proof. The only difference is we had to don't just do a blow up, we had to do a blow up and a Frobenius. Okay. All right, I should have had that written on the board first. That would have been slicker. But I do need to tell you. And maybe it's not clear why this green map right here is surjective. I think that's not obvious at all. So that's what I'm going to spend my time um, uh, doing now. But on the other hand, you can sort of see how we're really just using Frobenius and Serre vanishing to replace the Kodaira vanishing in this context. So what's the oh, so the conclusion is over C or or Carrick P. Either one. OK. All right. So I'm going to tell you what Frobenius splitting means. And that's going to actually, I'll keep this one up. I guess we don't want to see this diagram anymore. Mm, oh. I don't need the statement anymore. I do kind of want the diagram available. OK. So 
I'm going to give you a definition of what it means for a variety to be so-called Frobenius split, and we're going to quickly observe that projective space is Frobenius split. So definition, a variety x, again over k, perfect field of characteristic p, is Frobenius split from here on written as F split. It's Frobenius split if the map OX to F lower star OX splits. All right. Yay. OK. Um, it's equivalent to saying that OX to F to the E lower star OX splits for some or all E2. That's actually a convenient thing. I mean, so if I have this splitting, I can compose it with another Frobenius. That Frobenius splits, and I can just apply the splitting twice, and that'll give me the splitting. And on the other hand, if, if this to Fe splits, well, that map factors through that power. And if so, if this to that splits, then the lesser map splits too. So having this Frobenius splitting for one E is the same as having it for all E or some E. It doesn't matter. OK. I guess I'll leave this one. All right, so it turns out that at least a good chunk of varieties are Frobenius split. Maybe not, certainly not general type varieties, and we'll see that in a second too, but you know, a lot of other varieties are. So let's, let me start out with an example. Toric varieties. including projective space, are Frobenius split. I'm not going to write down a really careful proof, but I'm just going to tell you what the splitting is. I'm just going to tell you what it is on the torus. And then everything else follows by an easy computation. So. <clears throat> All right, so maybe I have x1 plus or minus 1 through xn plus or minus 1. This is my, my toric thing. Um, and remember, Frobenius split, this is a really a ring theoretic condition. So I just need to tell you what my splitting from Fe lower star, see this is x is spec of this, maybe? I'm going to tell you what Fe lower star Ox to Ox is. I'm just going to tell you what my splitting is. And it really is the obvious choice. All you do is, OK, I'm going to tell you what it does on a monomial. So x1 to the lambda 1 through xn to the lambda n. OK, we have to think about, for a second, what it's going to do. If it's going to be a splitting, it's got to send one to one. Okay? And if it's going to send one to one, we have to think, well, it has to be a module homomorphism. It has to be an OX module homomorphism. The OX structure on this part okay, is take a function and multiply it, and then the function acts by its p to the eth power. So in particular, if I have like x1 to the p to the e, xn to the p to the e, that's got to get sent to x1 through xn, because one's got to get sent to one. And so this is going to get sent to x1 to the lambda 1 over p to the e, dot, 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 xn to the lambda n over p to the e, if that's sensible. Right? If those are integers. And otherwise, we just send it to zero. Hmm. 
and that works. That lifts to the whole free being. That lifts to the whole, <laughs> to the whole thing. Okay. So why, are, why is Frobenius splitting good? Why is Frobenius splitting? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, why is that going to be good? Because our E right here is Frobenius split, and we needed this green map right here to be surjective. So let me make a quick observation, then I'll make a couple other, couple additional quick observations about Frobenius split varieties. If X is Frobenius split and L is any line bundle, Then, okay, two things. One, any HI, including H0, HIX L2 X. All right, if I tensor the Frobenius map, O X to F E lower star X with L, I'm going to get this map right here. Then, one, this guy injects. Right? And remember, Frobenius split just means I have a splitting map here. When I apply a functor to my splitting map, it's going to stay a splitting, so it's injective. And two, and this is slightly more relevant for us, H i x f e lower star omega x tensor L to the p to the e. This is just the dual version of what I just wrote. This guy surjects onto H i x. Omega x tensor L. And again, this map right here is dual to <clears throat> F e lower star omega x to omega x. And so if this map splits, so does this one. So it's a split surjection instead of a split injection. And so now, if I have this split injection, that's going to tell me right here, without having to think about anything more, that this map right here, which just is that second map I wrote, that number two, that map surjects. Okay. But actually, there's more. But wait, there's more. All right, I'm done with this diagram now. <laughs> So, <clears throat> note, if x is Frobenius split, then Kodaira vanishing holds. And again, this is very easy. I have hi. X, okay, I, I want to show that hi x omega x tensor L for L ample is zero, right? That's my goal. And if I'm for being a split, then I have this split surjection from F e lower star omega x to omega x. And if I twist by an L, for being a projection formula turns it into an L to the p to the e. And now this is a split surjection. This is zero by Sayre again. And so this is zero. All right. And so you might say, OK, well, toric varieties are Frobenius split. We can't expect everything's Frobenius split because Kodaira vanishing doesn't hold. Maybe lots of other things are Frobenius split, and we were getting so worried about Kodaira vanishing anyways. Um, but it turns out that actually a lot of probably you know, most varieties in any reasonable sense are not Frobenius split. Um, 
maybe I'll say things because I'm running out a little bit out of time here. Um, <clears throat> so for, if I take a Fano variety in characteristic P and I reduce it to characteristic zero, I'm sorry, to take a, just try that again. If I take a Fano variety in characteristic zero and I reduce it to characteristic P, then, you know, smooth Fano or log Fano in the KLT sense or something, then it's still Frobenius split for all P big. Um, <clears throat> but it might not be for being a split for some small piece, even if it's still Fano and smooth and stuff like that. Um, for abelian varieties, for being a split is the same as ordinary. So, all right, that rules out a lot of things. And for general type varieties, and this is the last thing I'm going to do, general type varieties are never for being a split. So this Frobenius splitting tool isn't always going to be so useful for us. But when it does kick in, it's very helpful. OK. So <clears throat> here's the argument. Here's the last thing I'm actually going to show or prove in any real sense. Um, <clears throat> Suppose I have any non-zero map in hom fe lower star ox to ox. Okay. For example, if Rubini is splitting, which is not a zero map because it's a splitting. Okay. If I take this, well, that actually tells me something about some hom sheaf. So if I have Hom of Fe lower star Ox into Ox. All right, I'm going to twist both sides by Kx or omega x if you'd like. And this thing is isomorphic to Hom Fe lower star. I'm going to write it as Ox Kx because that's slightly, it'll be slightly more convenient for me in a second. And Ox projection formula Pve Kx. This is just omega x to the p to the e. Kx is the canonical divisor. OK. Now, I can use, if I'd, if I'd like, groton deke duality or something like that for finite maps to just pull out the Fe lower star. And I have Ox p to the e Kx into Ox Kx. OK. And so this is Fe lower star of Ox, 1 minus P to the E Kx. So if I have a Frobenius splitting, then I have a global section of this line bundle. The Fe lower star just changes the module structure, doesn't actually do anything. And so that means a negative power of K has a global section. All right, general type's not going to have that. So no general type variety is F split. OK. So um, <clears throat> I want to make a couple quick comments here um, in my last minute. When I am Frobenius split, Every section in this line bundle, right, or in right here, every, every global section, maybe on H, I'll say every global section. Mm, do I have that somewhere written down? If I am for being a split, every single global section, because this is a surge action, comes from here. Now, <clears throat> that's actually pretty useful. Um, it even shows up in you know work of Hicken and Shu on their and you know the minimal model program and or existence of flips, you know for certain coefficients and characteristic bigger than five for three folds. Um, <clears throat> but basically, the point is, sections that come from Frobenius like this for high Frobenius, those sections actually. Frequently, and I don't have time to write down this example, and maybe I'll start with it next time on Monday, 
But those sections behave as though Kodaira vanishing was true in many cases. So if I'm able to cook up global sections of some adjoint line bundle like this one that come from some Frobenius image like that one, then they frequently behave as though Kodaira vanishing is true because I can write down diagrams very much like this one here. And I think that's what I'd like to, to sort of leave off by. Um, Kodaira vanishing maybe doesn't hold, but sometimes we can use Frobenius techniques to cook up sections, just like in the Sashadri constant example. And even better, the sections we cook up sort of behave as though Kodaira vanishing is true, at least in many contexts, in many, many ways. Um, okay, and I'm gonna, maybe I'll just say one word about what I'm going to do next time. Um, so next time I'm going to maybe finish up with a little bit of this, but I want to dive a little bit more into the local structure about what Frobenius splitting means. So it turns out that a variety being Frobenius split is very close to the variety being what's called log canonical or semi-log canonical if you're not normal. And I'd like to explain sort of what that connection means a little bit. I'll also explain how you could detect things like log terminal with Frobenius splitting and so on. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure, the perfection, why not? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I, maybe there's other people here who can answer this better than me. I mean, I've certainly wondered if there's some reasonable, can we do birational geometry for perfect schemes? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs>